this was a big event that happened at Columbia University on Friday, headlined by Hillary Clinton and the U.S. ambassador to the U.N., Linda Thomas-Greenfield, and the New York Times journalist, Jeffrey Gettleman, author of the now widely discredited piece, which weaponized sexual violence to baselessly accuse Hamas of weaponizing sexual violence on October 7th. And the gray zone was among those, the small number of voices, along with Mondo Weiss and Electronic Intifada, which pointed out the glaring holes in Jeffrey Gettleman's piece. And that's since been um, newly confirmed by reports that people inside the New York Times were embarrassed by Jeffrey Gettleman's piece. And he's been forced to try to defend his reporting in a follow-up article, which was just him doubling down on his fraud, which we talked about in a recent stream. But none of these uh, serious gaping holes in his so-called reporting have uh, hurt his place among the establishment, which in fact continues to treat him as if he's a serious figure. And that's why he was welcomed on Friday at this event at Columbia. I think it's one of the reasons why he was welcomed. Uh, I also think Jeffrey Gettleman appeared at this event uh, and as uh, part of a possible plan long ago to kind of crown him as a journalistic star. That's obviously been shattered by the New York Times canceling its podcast that was supposed to take his reporting into a new audio visual level and set the stage for another Pulitzer Prize that was canceled under internal pressure because of our work. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Um, but it shows that Gettleman is part of a network and it's not just a U.S. imperial foreign policy network. There's an Israeli component too. And he was networked into this story, but it didn't work out. The event backfired badly as we had hoped. There were protests outside and protests inside. Hillary Clinton is the is a professor of international and public affairs at Columbia SIPA, in addition to uh, her description of herself on her Twitter profile as a hair icon, mom, wife, grandma, times three, lawyer, advocate, fan of walks in the woods and standing up for our democracy. She was also installed into this position as a professor. Her class has been described in various reports uh, based on student feedback is extremely boring and uh, not very informative. And her performance here was uh, not only poor, but it was one of the few instances in which Hillary Clinton was held accountable for the vast crimes she's presided over. And since, you know, in the past several months, she has been one of the most vocal cheerleaders of the Gaza genocide using the hoax of Hamas mass rape in order to justify it. Here she is. That's my name. You are That's a right. War criminal. The people of Libya, the people of Iraq, the people of Syria, the people of Yemen, Sir, the people Sir, of, of Palestine, you as well as right the people now. of America, will you never are forget. You're violating the university I'm called of Rotter. I'm asking you to leave. The delegates will now escort you out of the building. You Thank you. I, can you? Sir. Sorry about that. Problem. The kind of hard work and the work that you will hear from the panelists today, um, I think, will solve uh, the problem. Here's Jeffrey Gettleman sitting right in front with his like uh, pirate vest on. The kind of hard work and the work that you will hear from the panelists today. Um, I think it's important that we, okay. All right, we're gonna we're gonna stop we're gonna stop a minute and I don't if you know what it, it why don't all of you just interrupt me so that you won't be introduced interrupting our panelists so that we don't have this kind of disruption when we have people who are real experts in this area and so I think it's uh, I think it's uh, important to. Uh, focus on the event we're here. People are free to protest, but they are not free to disrupt events or classes. Uh, and that is going to be the, you know, the uh, standards that we follow here and uh, going forward. You know, I want to show another angle of, of this uh, exchange because the people doing this are really brave. I mean, already on campus at Columbia, you're in an environment where you have students being attacked with chemical agents for speaking up for Palestine. 
you have an institution, if they're putting Hillary Clinton in that position, then obviously you can tell what the agenda is. So to speak out at in a school in an environment like this is dangerous. But then you have people standing up, confronting one of the world's most powerful people as a war criminal. The people doing this are Muslim students, you know, like women in hijab who are already, you know, uh, vulnerable to attacks and discrimination. And, and, you know, so well, well, here's an example. Are you not ashamed? You're exploiting okay. sexual violence right, we're gonna, for your own we're political gain. You're stop. not fooling okay. anyone. You've done this before. Yeah. Yeah. You've exploited yeah. and yeah. weaponized yeah. sexual yeah. violence yeah. in yeah. Libya, yeah. in yeah. Libya yeah. to yeah. exploit yeah. sexual yeah. violence so in Libya, so that, that you can justify U.S. militarization and instability in Libya. Libya. You're, you're doing that again to justify genocide in Gaza. You're doing that to justify genocide in Gaza. If you were truly enraged about sexual violence, you would be talking about the sexual violence in Palestine, the sexual violence that they endure by the IOS daily. You should be enraged. You're not feminist. You're not doing that. Here and going forward. You're that. You're you're no feminist. You're a white supremacist. And then going through her record of weaponizing sexual violence in places like Libya, spreading fake claims of Gaddafi distributing Viagra to justify destroying Libya, uh, calling her out in such a clear way. I mean, it's really, it's not easy to do. And I just really applaud the person who did that. Yeah. And that's why Bill Ackman wants to basically ban those students and their speech. Yeah. Getting in the way of this agenda, which has proceeded without much challenge for years. Uh, the only thing more delicious than that would have been Juanita Broderick interrupting her. <laughs> I mean, if she's going to really take a stand against like sexual abuse, then yeah, I don't. I don't see why Nita uh, waiting in on the Hamas sexual violence claims, yeah. but because she, she's kind of she's a pretty committed right winger. Right -wing, yeah, yeah. But she did have her experience with Bill Clinton, and she's been speaking out about it and calling out Hillary Clinton for her her hypocrisy. Um, and then also there was the interruption of Linda Thomas Greenfield. Yeah, and unlike Hillary Clinton, uh, UN Ambassador Linda Thomas Greenfield actually seemed to be bothered by being called out for her role in the genocide because she of course in her position has vetoed uh, measures calling for a ceasefire uh, and has um, pushed the fabricated claims about UNRWA the UN refugee agency the UN agency for Palestinian refugees so Linda Thomas Greenfield was also there and and got called out and uh, should we uh, who should we play that clip yeah I thought you had it up I got it here um, yeah well, she got shut down completely. I mean, they basically had to cancel the. They they had to. Uh, this is it. I don't know why there's no volume. Ask your delegates to now please escort you out. We, you are interrupting a academic event, and this is in contrast to the university regulations about time, place, and manner. You are now going to be escorted. Huh? Okay. So what I'd like to talk to you uh, about today, uh, to start with, I visited uh, five months ago a refugee camp in Adre Chad, not just over the border from Sudan, and I heard from so many people who have said to me... This is yet again a violation of the university rules of conduct. You are interrupting an academic proceeding. It is time for you to exit the space. This is a violation of the university rules of conduct. This is an academic proceeding and you need to exit the space. She's saying walk out of the event. I mean, and briefly and reconvene in a moment. We embrace freedom of expression at Columbia University. This is a violation of the university rules of conduct as it's a disruption <laughs> of an academic proceeding. Thank you for making your way out of the event space.
and they stop the event. the event space. You are in violation of the university rules of conduct. The event will proceed momentarily. And by the way, I mean, you can see in the upper right hand corner, it's co-sponsored by the Georgetown Institute for Women, Peace and Security. I mean, what an ironic, I mean, it's mostly women protesting this. Yes. It's mostly women and children being slaughtered in Gaza under the watch of Linda Thomas Greenfield yep. and Hillary Clinton's buddies and peace. I mean, give me, I mean, that, that's just so ironic. So they shut, they shut it down. They live, they shut that event down. Huge props to those protesters, um, a diverse group of protesters and to those outside. Um, yeah. I really, really appreciate the protesters outside. And, uh, you know, I'm proud to take our share of credit. This is a photo taken by our colleague, Jeremy Lafredo, outside the event. And people are taking inspiration from the factual investigative reporting we've been doing about October 7th and its aftermath. Um, and so I, I, I'm really proud that we were able to influence that protest and ruin Hillary and Linda Thomas Greenfield's day. I mean, the only regret I have is that they walked out before Jeffrey Gettleman went on stage <laughs> because he was able to do his completely pompous shtick without any interruption. Well, but he kind of hung himself by his own rope, though. Yeah. You know, so uh, maybe that's okay that he didn't face protest because he said some really damning things. Uh, but before we get into him, I just want to say about that sign and the uh, the pro that that demonstrator giving us credit. I especially appreciate that because there are some colleagues of ours in independent media who are who have gone out of their way to ignore the reporting we did to expose, for example, the New York Times Jeffrey Gettleman. Like the Intercept has gone out of their way to ignore the fact that yeah. we were on this story first um, when they were, <laughs> by the way, parroting it uh, and saying with democracy now. So I appreciate that there are people out there who. Uh, don't accept that journalism is like a schoolyard where some people have cooties and you can't go near them and you can't acknowledge them when they do the work first. It's, it's, yeah, it's I mean, it's, I mean, you're hard on the intercept. We've both been hard on them because they pushed the they pushed the Syria dirty war, they pushed regime change in Nicaragua, they pushed like all kinds of like they pushed leaks, probably like Western intelligence leaks to uh, um, denigrate. Iran portray Iran as like this malign force and you know they've just been pretty pathetic on and now they're they're going hard in the paint for Palestine they're fundraising off of it and uh you know they they're basically now that it's safe they're now starting to call out a lot of the October 7th deceptions as though they're the first ones to do it yeah I mean they're not crediting Mondo Weiss or EI either intifada electronic intifada yeah. either yeah um yeah. so you know that's just that's just whack. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Gettleman, Jeffrey Gettleman, lead author of the Screams Without Words report in the New York Times that we decimated, um, clinically and methodically showing that his sources had either outright lied or had changed their stories multiple times or that their own family members had called out the New York Times for misrepresenting their loved ones' deaths. Uh, Jeffrey Gettleman walks into this room as a discredited journalist, still welcomed by fellow elites because of his usefulness. He is actually the definition of a useful idiot, um, but Absolutely. I don't know if he's an idiot. He's sort of like, I mean, we consider him to be maybe an idiot as a journalist, but like he knows what he's doing. He believes in it. He's not like accidentally being used. And, uh, you know, look at him. Here he is. I mean, first of all, before we play this, seated to his right is Sheryl Sandberg. The, <laughs> I think she's a billionaire. She's oh, a yeah. neoliberal, fem self-styled feminist oligarch who helped uh, Mark Zuckerberg build Facebook into a global data mining behemoth. And also worked with him on the Zuck Bucks initiative to help privatize New Jersey public schools and destroy the public school system of New Jersey. She is the avatar of lean-in feminism. 
that women can be great moms and also work 25 hours a day. And uh, so here she is with Jeffrey Gettleman, and she's also an ardent Zionist who led the Israeli government's push alongside Hillary Clinton at the United Nations to demand that the world support Israel in its genocide in Gaza because of unproven claims of Hamas mass rape on October 7th. She's actually doing a documentary about it. So here she is with Jeffrey Gettleman, and Gettleman makes some very revealing comments, not only about his report on supposed Hamas mass rape, but on journalism itself. He interviewed almost 200 people over the course of two months. And what we found, I don't want to even use the word evidence because evidence is almost like a legal term that suggests you're trying to, to prove an allegation or prove a case in court. That's, that's not my role. Um, we all have our roles, and, and my role is to, is to document, is to present information, is to give people a voice. And we found information along the entire chain of violence, so of, of sexual violence. So let's play that one more time in case anyone missed. Suggest you're trying to evidence because evidence is almost like I don't want to even use the word evidence because evidence is almost like a legal term that suggests you're trying to to prove an allegation or prove a case in court. That's that's not my role. Um, we all have our roles, and and my role is to is to document, is to present information, is to give people a voice. And so his role is not to present evidence. It's basically what he's saying is information and evidence are two different things. And information could basically just be testimonies or stories. So his job is really uh, to shape the narrative of information, but not to provide evidence. And if there is no evidence, he should still declare matter-of-factly that he has proven and stated his case. Because if you actually look at the article, he's stating unequivocally that Hamas engaged in mass sexual violence on October 7th. So this is just, I've never heard a journalist say anything like that before. He's admitting he's a propagandist and yeah, he's pretending as if he just put some, some claims out there and letting the audience decide, no, the headline of your article was screams without words, how Hamas weaponized sexual violence on October 7th, a Times investigation uncovered new details showing a pattern of rape, mutilation, and extreme brutality against women in the attacks on Israel. So now he's trying to say, oh, I wasn't trying to put out a narrative. I was trying to just put some information out there. No, you put out a specific narrative and you pretended as if you had, you had evidence and now you're walking away from that because you've been shown to be a fraud because we've shown extensively, you can read our article that we wrote about how all the claims of his witness, so-called witnesses, do not add up. He's relying on people who've already been caught lying, like the volunteer from Zaka. Um, he's relying on claims with zero evidence whatsoever. And that's why, Max, you aptly titled the article uh, Screams Without Evidence, um, because he has not. And he's admitting that here now in front of an audience. Well, that's not his role. His role is to embody the stereotype of a journalist, like a foreign correspondent. <laughs> so foreign correspondents always have to wear a vest. And yes. when they're in the field, their vest is canvas and tan and has lots of pockets because they need to like reach into it to get their film. Like we still use film. If we get the pictures of Sebrenica out, but the West will bomb tomorrow and it'll save the it'll save the innocence and you know he's got uh pens and like power like energy <laughs> bars in the other pockets and now he's uh is speaking at a formal event so he has a vest on uh but it's a formal kind of um pirate vest 